All right, this video I'm going to continue on with the cross force truss and some additional information uh, that might be helpful to you and if you have some problems with your truss afterwards. So some common things I've seen. So in this case, we have our truss set up. We're on our. This is looking at from the a DSFW side. Sorry, here's our DSFW domain, dsfw.novell.com. And if we right click, we go to properties, and this again is in the Active Directory domains and trusts. Uh, plug-in with MMC. So if we go to the properties of that and we can look at trusts. We can see our outgoing and our incoming. And it shows both. We set it up as two-way trust even though really DSFW doesn't completely trust um, AD. So we'll just go in. Let's go and validate the trust. So if, you, if you're having some problems with it, come in validate it. You might need to reset the password. So a trust has a password that is set up uh, that, that gets changed every 30 days by default unless you change that and I'm gonna show you how you can change that here in this video so as you can see trust validates I have seen where it says it, it can't validate can't it might say that it's missing a file uh, but yet in the message you'll see that it says that it is valid the trust is valid and it does appear to be working properly so uh, it can be a little deceiving. You can go just go and delete and recreate the trust if, if you're worried or usually just resetting the password and it'll prompt you if there's a problem to reset the password. Usually that will fix any any issues that you have. So here this is updating the suffixes if we have any uh, suffixes to update. In this case we don't. But anyway, this, that, That's how you can go and validate and reset the password if it needs to be reset. So this, like I said, this this uh, trust has a password and this password is generated on the AD side or the Windows server sets the password a random password and it sets it for an object in DSFW let's take a look at it. so here is our DSFW server let's go and browse and it's by default it's it's in the users container and it will be the name of the domain, the AD domain. So in this case, it's ad.novell.com. So it's AD, and I'll put a dollar sign at the end. So this is our object. It it uh, has a password that is set randomly created, set by the the uh, um, Windows server. Uh, this is, also goes for workstations when they join. They create an object, and they have a password that is set. So if we go and look at the other tab, we can see. That this has a NSPM do not expire password. This means that on the DSFW side, it's never going to expire the password. So if you don't want to change it, you can mod you can configure that. If you do want to have it reset all the time, you can configure that. The DSFW is not going to care. It's not going to expire the password on you. So then that so that is your trust object uh, for our trust between AD and DSFW in this case. Also for workstations, by default they're put in this computer's container. Here's uh, the object for our XP workstation. If I've talked about this a little bit before that you want to make sure that this is that when you join workstations they have a unique name otherwise they're battling over the same uh, object inside DSFW. So anyway that's just kind of side note there. So the same thing on this, if we look at this object we go and look at the other tab we can see this do not expire password. So it, it, what we can do is we can change it so that the AD site or, or a workstation never changes the password or it extends the time in which they change the password. So that by default it's 30 days, say they up it to 60 or 90 days depending on your security policies. So we look at our DSF or our AD server. Let's uh, actually go into regedit so we can see again this is our forest our trust when we see it's an AD domain here let's go into regedit and if we look we'll start from the top in the H key local machine system current control set services should be net log on and then parameters and inside here will you see we have a maximum password age. So when it hits 30 days, it the workstation or 
server in this case will reset the password now sometimes I've seen where that password doesn't always get set the workstation or server in this case will set the password it will change on its side but it doesn't make it over to the DSFW side so that object actually its password never gets changed therefore the trust can break or a workstation in the workstation's case it doesn't uh, access the the, do the domain properly so if you want to extend the, the time between the passwords changing just come in here and change this to decimal and you can change that to say 90 days you want it to to uh, uh, reset the password so if you're you know say every couple months three months you're having a problem you want to extend that uh, so that you maybe you're not having a problem with the the trust password getting set properly you know you can up it to 90 days another option is if you want to just disable it altogether and it's pretty easy to do just come in here there's the disable password change same thing uh, just change it from from uh, 0 to 1 and now it's enabled or I should say disabled you have dis enabled the disable of passwords so the, the passwords are now disabled it will not attempt to reset a new password and this is goes for our domain controllers and setting up you know passwords as far as with the, the trust or with workstations again both the same uh, th there are some concerns uh, that you know if you're not changing your passwords it is possible that uh, somebody could you know possibly figure out the password for your workstation object or your trust object and use that object to access the domain I think it's, pr it's pretty highly unlikely I'm sure there's a lot of other ways people would could get in there would be a lot easier um, but uh, it, it is a, a possible security concern uh, something to, to think about uh, but for most people I've talked with it's really not too big of a concern um, and disabling it will just help to ensure that you don't have problems with your or eliminate one possibility of a problem with a cross force trust and that uh, the password expiring and not getting set properly on the DSFW side so I hope this was helpful to you uh, and we'll continue to make some uh, more videos I'm working on uh, a um, setting up an additional domain controller and now that today that OES 11 has shipped I'm uh, going to be doing a, a video on OES 11 install so uh, stay tuned thanks for watching